Customers are individuals or companies who purchase goods and or services from you. Customers are used in customer invoices and receipts. In this session, we're going to go over the General tab and the Addresses tabs and setting up a customer. From your menu, select Setup and Customers. You can create a new customer by clicking the New button in the lower left. That will bring up a detailed screen to fill out the information and you'll save when you're finished with the information. Or you can create a new customer by selecting an existing customer that's similar to the one you want to create and click Copy. That'll bring in all the information from the existing and you can make any changes as needed and again click Save. Or you can create a new customer while you're doing a customer invoice or a sales order. When you have the form open, the screen open to enter the sales order or an invoice, click in the customer field, right click and do new. And that again will bring up a new customer detail screen. We're gonna go to the next button. So if we highlight a customer, the delete button would allow you to delete a name out of the list, and that will only um, be available if you have an entered activity to that name. If you've entered activity, it won't let you delete, but then you can inactivate. You can right click on this name and do activate, deactivate, and either deactivate all the companies from this name, or if one of the companies needs to be deactivated, one company can be active and the other inactive or whatever situation uh, would apply to this customer. We're going to go ahead and activate it. And also we can do a combine. So if you have two names on the list that actually represent one particular customer, you can use combine. You want to first select the name you want to get rid of, click the combine button, and on the next screen select the name that you want to merge that name into. That would bring all the activity from that first name into the name that you're merging into. And that first name would then disappear. And there's also a mass update button at the bottom. If you have one piece of information that you want to change on multiple customers, then you can use the mass update feature. And there is a video that steps you through that process. And now we're going to edit a name. So we're going to select a name and click edit and go through the details on the general tab. So in the upper left is your name format, and your name can either be a business or an individual. If it's a business, then the name field is formatted as one field company. If it is an individual, then the name is formatted as last name, first name, middle initial. On the right of that is a way to track how long you've been doing business with this customer and enter the date that you began uh, your first entries. If you are tracking salespersons in your names list and you want to assign a salesperson to this particular customer, you can do the lookup. It would give you any names that are marked as salesperson and that would assign that person to this customer. In your name information, you have an abbreviation and you have some ways of managing your abbreviation for duplicates. You can either allow duplicates, warn if there's a duplicate or no duplicates allowed. And if you have either of these two options, it would give you a pop-up that would uh, either warn you or not let you go on until you change that abbreviation. On the right is a contact if you want to store a contact for this customer. And then we have our company name and our address information. Depending upon your location, there are different ways to format your address information. And that preference is stored under File, Preferences, and in the General section, click on address settings. On the right is more uh, details that you can store for this name, the phone, fax, email. And if you need to charge sales tax on this customer, then you'll have a list of your different sales taxes and you can select the sales tax that applies to this customer. If this customer is exempt, then there is an option on the accounting tab to mark not subject to tax and put in the exemption ID. And then we have our shipping method. Um, the shipping method is if you're shipping to your customer and you want to put a default shipping method when you select this customer. So all of the fields that you fill in on the screen are going to default when you do a sales order or a customer invoice for that customer. 
And then down at the bottom are the sales terms. The payment term is going to calculate the um, due date and the discount date if you're allowing discounts for early payment. And then we have our different price levels. Your sales items can store different price levels depending upon the level of customer. And now you want to select the uh, sales price level for this particular customer. If some of your sales items allow to trade discount and you have that checkbox marked, then uh, you can put in the percentage here if this customer is allowed to have a uh, trade discount. Otherwise, you'll leave that at 0%. CenterPoint allows you to keep credit limits on customers. There's a preference for that under File, Preferences, Customer Invoices, and Credit Limits. If we click the Database tab and turn on that we're going to use credit card limits, then we can choose the options of how we want that managed. Um, I'm going to leave that off. And if you, um, if you want to fill in, if you want to use the credit card, terms, then you'll fill in what you want your credit limit to be on this particular customer. The credit hold is if there is an issue with this customer and you don't want any new customer invoices or sales orders entered until that's resolved, then you can put a check on credit hold and that would uh, then um, give you a warning that you can put in new customer invoices until this is unchecked. Down at the bottom is active status, another way to activate or inactivate your customer. And then additional notes. Additional notes are some uh, other pieces of information that you want to uh, track on this particular customer. <clears throat> and these notes, if I enter a note of delivery to East overhead door. If we put notes on there, and you can also put a date if you want to stamp a date on there, um, the notes that we have in additional notes can be displayed on your sales order, or your customer invoice, if we have a checkbox in print notes on forms. And then in your forms designer, under setup forms designer, customer invoice, um, you open up your invoice and you bring over a field called customer notes. Then whatever notes you have in this field, the screen of the customer notes would be printed in your invoice for um, additional instructions for your driver, perhaps. And then we have options in the lower right of setting tab options. And that's just a shortcut so that you don't have to stop at every field as you're going through um, the different uh, fields in your screen. Now we're going to go to the addresses tab. And in the addresses tab, you can store as many different addresses as you need for this customer. If you need to make a new one, you would click your new button. If you want to make a new one by copying existing, because some of the information is the same, you can highlight one and click copy. Or you can delete one if that address has not been used yet. So if we wanted to make a new address, we could click New and give it a location type of shipping address and give it a name and a contact if we want. And we can put in that particular address. And if we want to print the contact, if we had a contact and we want the contact printed on the form, that checkbox would do that. And this is going to activate or deactivate your different addresses. So as you have an address where the address changed, you can just inactivate that address so it doesn't become available on new entries. And then we have the different types of address. So currently, our billing address is marked for all of these different types. If this was, we wanted this one to be the default shipping address. So when we select this customer, we want this to default to be the shipping address. And we check that box and it's going to give us a warning that the billing address already has it marked as the default shipping. Do you really want to continue? And you're going to say yes. And if we go back to billing, it no longer has the default as shipping. It might be that you have several different shipping addresses in here. If it's that type of company that has different locations and you can have as many shipping addresses as you want and you just select the one you want at the time of entering that particular invoice. 
each one of these addresses stores the information particular to that address. So each one of these would have different information. Each one of these addresses can also store the shipping method and sales tax if that's different for this particular address. Um, the communication methods on the bottom, uh, the standard ones are listed, but you can add new ones by clicking the communications method and add a new method if needed. And then again, there's additional notes that you could store for each one of these different addresses if you needed to. And those are some different things that you can do of uh, setting up your customer and the different pieces of information. And we'll have other videos on the accounting tab and the credit card and custom name fields tabs and the email print tab.